Welcome! In front of me is a Redmi Turbo 3 and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this device. So to get started you want to open up your settings application and that's where most of the things obviously will be. So I'm going to start off with and see what we have on the lock screen. So we have things like pocket mode. Uh, lock touch gestures uh, when placed in a pocket so it uses i believe the camera uh, to basically see if it's being blocked if it is it considers this to be a pocket mode and then just prevents you from for instance doing like things like butt dialing um, now let's go back we have notifications and status bar so we have notif that was a tongue twister for some reason notification uh in style or shade and here we have two different ones you have the classic and the android so you can choose whichever one you want Oops, no notifications to showcase this on unfortunately uh, then if you go back we have also uh, notifications so it can if you have any typically it will show you i believe it's three notifications icons of the specific app that is notifying you and then just like three dots but you can change that so i think this is the default one you can have one icon or you can have none so if you want a like clean look, you can choose that. I prefer to have something like a single icon myself. Sorry for that. Next, a little bit lower, we have the battery indicator. This just allows you to choose how the battery is being displayed. Uh, it's already set to the one that I like, which is the battery with a percentage inside. You can have it cleaner with just like a battery itself with no number or you can have the percentage outside if uh, you struggle to see what the percentage is of the battery as this will obviously make the uh, text a little bit bigger than the battery making it much easier to actually see uh, now scrolling a little bit further down do we have anything interesting here and uh, we don't so let's go back and now we can move over to display and brightness and here we have things like light and dark mode and you can choose those uh, permanently which with this device, uh, it's a nice AMOLED, I think, or even OLED display right here. So these, uh, anything that is black is just like pitch black as pixels are basically turned off there. So it looks pretty nice. But you also have the option to have, uh, have it set so it automatically swaps between light and dark mode based on the time of day. So switch to dark mode, I think we need to do that. And then sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer. So that's a nice option if you like dark mode, but only for instance, during the night time. We have also things like uh, sunlight mode, which is adjust brightness uh, to stronger ambient light. Um, I don't recall what the actual uh, peak brightness of this device is, but it, if I remember correctly, it was something pretty high, which typically most devices that have anything like 3000 nits or something like that, they don't output 3000 nits permanently because that is just too bright for, for indoor, indoor usage. So even when you have it set, for instance, in here to max brightness, this is not the actual max brightness of the device, uh, the brightness that the device can output. Uh, so what the sunlight mode allows you to do is basically have it crank up and again it's not affected right now you can see me enable this doesn't really do much uh, but it will output higher brightness when you go outside and the camera detects that for instance you have blasting sun outside during summer it will then crank up the display to higher brightness but it only does it in uh, short bursts so it's not going to be permanently in that brightness if you are constantly outside uh, after like a minute or so it will tone it down as it might just if you would permanently run this display at like max brightness it might burn out pixels as OLED displays tend to burn out so it will avoid that by just only giving you short bursts of it now uh, scrolling down Further, we have things like refresh rate and we have it uh, set to default or we also have the custom mode. Now by default I would recommend the well, default mode as this will be the best option for majority of the people that like to have that nice smooth motion when scrolling up and down. But if you don't really see much of a difference between 120 which is uh, when you're scrolling up and down or 60 uh, then I would recommend changing it to 60 as this will give you better battery life. But for everyone else who does see a difference when moving up and down between the 120 and 60, I recommend the default as this will 
utilize both of these modes at the same time. So when nothing is happening on the screen, it lowers it down. And when there is movement like this, it automatically cranks it up to accommodate for that, uh, for that motion and give you this nice smooth battery smooth motion for that which is obviously pretty nice. Then additionally, uh, we have Xiaomi, it's kind of like AI image uh, enhancements. So you have super resolution, just an upscaling uh, based on the processor. Uh, so it might have some artifacting, it might not always be perfect, but when you have some lower resolution images, it might obviously give you better image quality. That uh, also extends to videos right here. Now, next is the HDR enhancement. This just converts eight, uh, SDR, so st standard dynamic range to high dynamic range. It is fake, uh, but sometimes you might have these nice kind of like uh, images where, or also videos, where you have, for instance, camera panning on a sun and standard dynamic range will be just similar brightness to the rest of the environment. High dynamic range will make that sun pop. Uh, so this is, again, going to be conversion it's not going to be like a real content that has been recorded in high dynamic range so it won't be perfect uh, but again in terms that when it works it just will improve your image quality a little bit better and furthermore again it will consume more of your phone's battery uh, but that both of those the image uh, the upscaling and the HDR only consume more battery when they're being used for uh, for doing what they're supposed to do. So for instance, right now on the home screen, it's not being utilized at all, as there's nothing to upscale here. There's no video player, there's no video playing. So it's just not really doing anything. But if I were to open up maybe something like uh, YouTube, probably not on this device, uh, but any kind of uh, video player that is supported, it would try to upscale it as long as it's already not at like a good resolution. Obviously, if it's already at max resolution of this display, uh, this most likely won't be upscaling as it's just redundant to upscale something that is already high, high enough resolution to utilize all the pixels here. Uh, but in lower content, it will try to improve it. Now, going back to the main settings page in the settings, we can scroll down to... I need to find it, so bear with me. Is it in here? I don't think so. It's probably going to be in display and brightness. Okay, now I can't find it. There we go. Uh, so I was looking for the system navigation. It is under home screen, which is a very odd place to place it, as you can use navigation everywhere, not, all, not just on home screen. So in here, uh, you can tap on it and you can see we have the gesture navigation and the button navigation. You can also change the position of the back and recent buttons if you like the buttons itself, but you get screwed up by the flipped uh, orientation of them. Uh, you can swap it in here, as you can see, quick little flip, but I personally prefer gestures. So when enabled, it just shifts the buttons off, uh, or gets rid of them and gives you this tiny little bar right here, which I personally like to also get rid of. So we can click right here on this checkbox and this just hides the gesture bar as well, while still retaining the same functionality. So swipe up to home and swipe from recent, uh, or swipe up from sides to go back and swipe up and hold to go to recent. And as you can see, it gives us a nice, very nice clean look to the device. This device has amazing screen to body ratio, so this looks even better on this phone. But in any case, this would conclude the tweaks and tricks I want to show you. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.